I'm Lieutenant Williams, a police officer who works in the Juvenile Division. I'm on my way to Monroe Junior High School to talk to a group of young people. Well, that looks like fun, huh? Young people hitchhiking on the side of the road instead of buying a car like a respectable citizen? Hitchhiking seems like a good way to get from one place to another, but sometimes, just like a transformer, the dangers of hitchhiking are more than meets the eye. Let's study the case of Jimmy Barnes. Jimmy played baseball all afternoon and didn't feel like walking, so he decided to thumb a ride. Little did he know, the price of this pickup may be riding a thumb. He had done it a hundred times before, and in fact, thought he had struck gold when the driver talked about just how many fun toys he had waiting back at home. The driver asked Jimmy simple questions, such as if he'd ever seen a grown man naked. And Jimmy, while slightly unnerved at first, admitted that unfortunately, he had not. At least, not yet. When Jimmy got out, the stranger reminded him that the age of consent in Nevada is only 16. Then he told him he'd see him again. After all, now he had Jimmy's address. Sure enough, the following day when Jimmy finished playing ball, the man was there waiting, complaining that his pants were suddenly too tight. That's odd, thought Jimmy. Maybe they had shrunk in the wash. They stopped at a drive-in and the stranger treated Jimmy to some coke. Afterwards, he ordered Jimmy a soda pop. The stranger told Jimmy his name was Ralph, and then he said some off-color jokes. But the jokes didn't bother Jimmy in the slightest, since he lived in black and white. Jimmy felt good to earn the confidence of a man who never seemed to stop sweating. The following Saturday, they went fishing together, and they started calling each other nicknames. Ralph said it was a good way to be more friendly with one another. Thanks for coming fishing with me, Jimmy-o, said Ralph. Jimmy replied, Not a problem, Sex Master 9000. Then, during lunch, Ralph showed him some pornographic pictures. Jimmy wasn't impressed, since he recently had the internet installed at his house but he looked on to humor Ralph. What Jimmy didn't know is that Ralph was sick, a sickness that wasn't visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious, a sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual, but even worse, Ralph was a Democrat. Despite Ralph voting incorrectly during the last presidential election, Jimmy felt a fondness for Ralph, and the two continued to go interesting places together. Ralph was generous, and kind, and not too girthy for Jimmy. He bought Jimmy presents, and even a Nintendo Switch OLED edition. That's a really great gift. So when Ralph first asked Jimmy to go fishing alone with him, Jimmy didn't bother asking his parents or teacher, since they'd most likely try to steal his new Nintendo Switch OLED edition. After Ralph patiently waited until Jimmy was 18, they had gay sex, and were both promptly arrested. Jimmy's rich white parents were able to pay his $100,000 bail. But not all homosexuals are passive. Some of them are sick freaks who wear full tuxedos to a basketball game. This is the true origin story of future NBA superstar LeBron James. 
LeBron and his friends were playing an ordinary game of haphazardly put the ball in the net with no respect for basketball rules whatsoever. As the game broke up, and the others left, LeBron said, fuck Michael Jordan that pussy ass bitch, and decided to put in five more hours of jump shot practice. The stranger joined him. He had learned how to lay up from the WNBA, so he wasn't good at all, but he had a lot of spirit. After a few shots, LeBron said he had overstayed his time and tried to leave. The stranger pointed to some bushes nearby and said, There's a camera crew over there and a narrator who keeps insinuating I'm a pedophile. How fucked up is that? The man offered to drive LeBron home once they'd finished shooting the ball. The man told LeBron of all sorts of wild fantasies to win him over, such as you'll play in the NBA someday, and you'll be the mascot for Sprite Cranberry, and you'll be in Space Jam 2 and it will somehow suck more than the original. When they finished, the stranger told LeBron if he kept practicing, he'd be a fine ball player one day. It was all to butter LeBron up for the shocking truth that he'd learn later. That man was an official talent scout for the NBA, and just that next year, he arranged to have LeBron signed up for a 17-season contract as soon as he graduated college, making LeBron a celebrity and multi-millionaire. As Danny and Lee got the newspapers ready for Lee's afternoon delivery, they only casually noticed the two boys who raced by in the afternoon traffic. And they couldn't give less of a shit about the car that drove up afterwards. Until the driver called them over, that is. Did two guys ride by on bicycles? The boys nodded their heads. Well, I'm an official talent scout for the NBA, and those two look like real promising talent. Hop in so when I catch them, you can help me make sure I've got the right guys, and I'm not just being racist. Danny got in, and the car sped away. Lee, who was more of a football kind of boy, stayed behind. Lee was suspicious for no reason. Later that day, he delivered a paper to Danny's house. Unpatriotically, Danny's mother was more concerned over her missing son than the menace of our newly elected Democratic President John F. Kennedy. Don't worry, ma'am, said Lee. I've got the key to my father's rifle cabinet, and I just applied to work at the Texas School Book Depository. Satisfied, Danny's mother went to go clean or faint or whatever it is women do. Coincidentally, at the same time, the car Danny had gotten into was being assaulted by Wasteland Raiders. The Raiders hoped to rob the car of its gasoline and food, while selling the driver into slavery and cannibalizing poor Danny. The lesson here is that football is better than basketball. Public restrooms are also where gay dudes like to hang out sometimes. Same as anyone else. Cause hey, Everyone's got a shit without making it home first eventually. Since it was late, Bobby suggested that they take a shortcut under the pier, but the others mumbled something about promising new NBA contracts and left to head towards the nearest gym. Remember the signs of spotting someone with mental sickness. Wearing a full suit and jacket at the beach is not the mark of a mentally stable person. When Bobby saw he was being followed by a drunken salesman, he decided to walk home with his friends after all. Bobby probably could have benefited from hearing the man's advice on re-evaluating his health insurance options, but a slovenly businessman who wears his suit to the beach instead of his company-approved professional swimwear uniform is not to be trusted. There's a lot of sick people in this world, far more than I have time to cover in this film. You have men who wear pink shirts, People who drink light beer. Children who smoke filtered cigarettes. Women who vote. People who subscribe to VTuber channels. And so much more. But the important thing is to pay attention. To always make the right decisions. That man you're talking with could be a disgusting pervert. Filling your head with terrible ideas and taking advantage of your trust. Now if you'll excuse me, I've finally arrived at Monroe High School. So now it's time for me to grab the prettiest virgin I can find and force her to be my girlfriend. Good day.